Hello and welcome to this video on Git Hello World. In this video, we'll go from zero to Git. We'll start off by using the .NET CLI to create a, an MVC web app uh, and a unit test project. And then we'll initialize them into a Git repository. We'll work our way into creating a new branch, making a few code changes, and then merging them back. And we'll summarize by showing you the history and the ability to roll those changes back. All of this we'll be doing locally using the Git command line. The intention here is to show you how easy it is to use the Git command line and the seamless integration that you have with Visual Studio Code. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right into the demo. All right, let's launch the command line and navigate into a folder where I have my repository. Let's create a new directory, call it Azure Ops underscore three change directory. Now we're going to use the .NET CLI to create ourselves a new solution. Next, we're going to create ourselves a web project and a test project. Now that we have the web project and the test project in place, let's add the reference to it in our solution. Cool. With uh, all of the projects created and the solution mapped out to it, let's open up the Visual Studio Code Editor. We can do that directly from the command line as well. As you would expect, the Visual Studio Code is open in the context of the folder where we were performing the operations. As you can see, we have the test project here, we have the web project, and if I navigate into the source control section, it tells me that I don't have a source control provider registered yet. Let's change that. We're going to initialize a new Git repository here. As you can see, the moment I initialize a new Git repository, Visual Studio Code detects that there's a Git uh, version control uh, sets up within that folder, and it loads all the files because none of them have yet been committed to the source control. All right, I'm just going to clear uh, the command prompt and then uh, build a solution. The build succeeded. We can come back into the uh, Visual Studio Code, and you can see that the list of pending changes has gone from 130 to 132. And what's happening here is, is Visual Studio Code is treating DLLs and PDB files as pending changes as well. Clearly, we want to ignore those files because we don't want to commit them into our Git repository. For that purpose, we're going to create ourselves a Git ignore file. Now, within Visual Studio Code, you can install an extension called Git ignore add, which basically gives you the ability to add Git ignore files for various IDEs. Let's take a sample of how this will work. If I hit F1 and I get the option of add git ignore, let's select that, and it asks me which IDE do I want to add the git ignore file for. I'm going to choose Visual Studio. And then I'm going to run the command again for add git ignore, and then I'm going to git ignore Visual Studio code. As you can see, the moment I do that, the list of pending changes goes down to just 32. Let's have a quick look at the git ignore file that's been added. As you can see, the git ignore file basically has ignore for user-specific settings, user-specific files, DLLs, PDBs, and you know, test results, etc. OK, so now that we have our changes here, let's quickly run the solution.
it's telling me that the .NET run needs to be run in the context of the web project. So I'm going to change directory into the web project. Great, so this is now running as a server. Let's take the URL of the web app, open up another command line, and run this up in Google Chrome. Fantastic, and you can see our web app that we've just created, an MVC app, is running on, the, on, on Google Chrome. So next, what we're going to do is uh, commit our code and then look at making some changes to this web app. Okay, so let's start off by asking Git what is the status of the current repository. Git tells us that all of the changes in that repository are yet to be committed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stage these changes first. By running this command, we're telling Git to stage these changes. If we go in Visual Studio Code now, you'll see that it indicates that these changes that were before treated as uncommitted untracked are now being treated as staged. Now I've committed all the changes in the Git repository. If I come back to Visual Studio Code, you'll see it happily indicates that the, the changes are fully committed, except obviously the, the some of the pending changes because we need to go back in the context of the solution and commit again. And with that, you'll see all the changes are now committed. Okay, so next up, what we're going to do is create ourselves a new branch. Um, and after we've created a branch, we're going to start making some changes. As you can see, we only have the master branch. So let's go off and create a new feature branch. On running this command again, you can see that I have two local branches now. One is the master that we were working on, and the other one's the new branch. So let's check out the new branch that we've created. Now, as you can see, we've changed the context of the branch. So if I come back to Visual Studio Code, we should see that change there as well. As you can see, the context of the branch has changed here as well. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the banner. And in order to do that, I'm going to add a new image and change um, uh, uh, some HTML to accommodate for the banner image to show up. Right, I've made all the changes that I needed to, so let's run up the app once again and see how it's working.
Perfect. As you can see that the front banner is now changed and it carries the text for Let's DevOps and the other images are still intact. Right. Perfect. So the changes we needed to make are done. Let's commit our changes. As you can see, there are only two pending changes there. So we're going to commit these changes now by first staging them. Now bear in mind that these changes have been done on the feature branch that we created. These changes are not there in the master branch. So next up, we're going to merge these changes into the master branch. But in order to do that, we first need to check out the master branch. And by running this command, we've basically merged the changes across. Let's look at the history of the Git master branch now. There you go. So on running the git log minus v minus minus graph command, we can see the evolution of changes in the master branch. We first initialized the repo, then we added the solution and the test project. And now after doing the merge, we basically merged the changes that were made in the feature branch. Now working with git locally is, is a breeze. Now in case I didn't need the banner changes in the application, using the command line, I can roll these changes back by simply running a command. Let's see how. Now I've run the git reset hard command, which will take out the last change um, because I've specified the commit version before that. So let's look at the git history now. And as you can see that that change is rolled back. So, so far we've seen how easy it is to work with git from the command line, the integration of git with um, Visual Studio Code is, is splendid and therefore there's really no reason for not using Git even for the local projects that you're working in your dev space.